these were real time in front of camera tricks. There was no CGI at that time. So uh, if you want, had an idea to do something, uh, you just had to do it. The Conan Bob Ann was a lovely film to work on. And Arnold was great to work with, you know, great character. There's so much in there, there was, there was a lot of things. You, you know, you just work from day to day doing things. On that particular film, and often I'm back rooming it, and I'm there for shooting the second unit, or then shooting with effects things with the first unit, with so much going on, we're just sort of background people, but most of our work is filling the screen. I suppose one of the biggest things that came when we got there, we find Arnold couldn't lift the sword without hurting anyone. It was so heavy. If he had swung it around, it could decapitate someone easy. <laughs> we was out in Spain at that time, and Rafi came to us and said, what can we do about it? So I said, well, if we can get fiberglass, maybe I'll make a fiberglass one. So that was my first job, I think, manufacturing us the actual blade. It was presented to them and they didn't even realise it was a fiberglass one. Then one day, there was a hell of a problem. He was fighting the other opposition who'd got a samurai sword, which had been loaned to them, and it was very expensive. And when they thought it was a fiberglass sword, it would be no problem because they, you could cut away at the sword without damaging the samurai sword. So they could look like a real fight. After a couple of minutes, the samurai sword snapped in half and there was hell to pay. You know, and I said, what is your sword made of? I said, only fiberglass. <laughs> the sequence of the butcher's area, I filled a whole lot of moulds of human bodies with uh, all of their insides pulled out. We made these things, filled the moulds, painted them, and when the director saw it, he found it too horrifying. And I think by then, production had started to realise that some aspects of the original Conan were a bit bloody, so they illuminated it with red light, which completely flattened out all of our realistic painting. I think one of the funniest things that they came to us and said, you've bought 10, 10 bottles of vodka. What the hell are they for? Well, couldn't get proper blood out there. So uh, when I bought these bottles of vodka and then found all these, you know, normally fruit juices and things like that, I managed to come up with a concoction that did look like uh, blood because Arnold wasn't going to have anything on him which wasn't uh, organic, you know. So and anyway, we, uh, it all came up and blood was used everywhere. <laughs> we had to make, up, make sure we used it because you want to know where the 10 bottles of vodka went. I think there was even more than that, but I know there was about 10 at one stage, you know. We've got to have the alcohol it or, or it has started to go rotten. The sequence where Arnold is crucified on the tree, beautiful piece of sculpture, that tree by Peter Vosi. You get his, these lovely close-ups of him realising that there's a vulture that's probably going to peck at him, and uh, he's not yet dead, so you get sequence shots of the vulture. And this, the mechanical vulture was made by Giuseppe. Uh, there were some problems with the skin on the outside because there wasn't time to make a foam rubber skin for all of it. And Carlo De Marquis didn't really help Giuseppe's work because he put the skin of part of the vulture over the top of a mechanical mechanism and it didn't have enough flexibility. We had some vultures, that was the other one. She went and managed to get some tame vultures and they weren't told that you don't put them in the same cage. And all of a sudden the vultures got down to three and then two, and then I think there was one left. They just killed themselves off and disposed of themselves, I suppose. So we ended up with one vulture, that's right, yeah. <laughs> And 
And another one that came up was difficult. The witch, they wanted arrows and they didn't want them to be flaming, like a flaming arrow you see in a cowboy film. They wanted them to, to glow. So we, we thought gun cotton, well, we can't. So we got sulfuric and nitric acid and experimented and cotton and whatever, and we made quite a lot of it. But one one day we was making some and it started to go off and it was really dangerous when we were cooking it. And we had the whole place filled with these horrible red fumes. And in the end, I chucked it straight outside in the car park. And uh, and as it was, it was raining and and uh, thought, well, that'll be all right now. And about two minutes later, two, two police cars arrived and I hated it because they were sitting over our gun cotton and we didn't tell them they were sitting over gun cotton but we thought it would be all right. But I since learned that gun cotton goes off when it's wet anyway so it don't make no difference. But uh, anyway, when they gone we, we, we found the gun cotton, cleaned it up, washed it again and it was good, you know and put some different chemicals with it to make it green and red and blue and different colours. The sequence when they're getting the spirits out of Arnold, the whole sequence that we shot in uh, Andalusia in the south near Almeria, it wasn't it was just along the coast from Al Almeria in a place called Aguadulce, sweet water, which is now full of greenhouses. It was all this business how we're gonna do the big snake. And we were looking on hydraulics and stuff like that. And uh, and the whole thing got became a hydraulic lump, you know, in the end, you know. There was a lovely sequence, life cast and a plaster head of the A snake being pushed into the back of a life cast of you so the latex morphed. They had snakes on there and they'd got these snakes and of course there was lots of very beautiful actresses if you remember watching the film and they wanted these girls to handle these snakes well most of them wouldn't get anywhere near them but after a few weeks of the film they were walking around with these snakes when they didn't have to it was just part of the thing you know um, they just become to like them i took over the building of the big snake there were elements in the structure of the snake which when you build an animatronic thing it's always important to have the articulation points as near to the surface as you can, especially with a snake which is moving one way and another. My first thing was to do was to make a foam rubber puppet. I just took the original moulds to make the outside skin, which was in uh, a beautiful foam rubber, uh, which Carlo de Marquis had filled all of these moulds from Bray Studios. And I took the original moulds, which had been taken to um, Spain, and refilled them with latex and then foam urethanes behind. So that basically what we had was a bendy toy. Now Arnold Schwarzenegger, was strong enough to take hold of this thing and just put his arms around it and wrap it around himself. The crimping mechanism had slipped and obviously they had to take the snake off the set. They did the next sequence with Arnold playing with, with the Vendi toy snake. Um, and we also, the next day, I did some modifications and the special effects department put some balsa wood sequences in a pre-cut neck and they put a small explosive explosive charge in there i think to destroy the the balsa wood so that um, the head could be cut off and i think decapitating the snake was a th uh, a bit of a challenge i think we, it was a uh, big uh, tubs of jelly and things like that so we could you know cut the head off <laughs> There were a lot of fire jobs to do on that, on Conan the Barbarian. Uh, the, the big steps up to the big block palace, all that had to be plumbed in instantaneously and all that sort of, That was a big job, that was a big job. And other than that, it was a, it was a good film to work on, you know. There was, there was normal sort of stuff in the villages and things like that. 
and all these people with their little fires cooking stuff and stuff. It was a great film to work on, you know. Amazing. And I say, I met Giuseppe Tutora on that film and from then on we went on to do two or three lo other lovely films. They were great to work on, that's all I can say. Unfortunately, most of the people I knew who worked on it, I think have since gone. Yeah. That's our life, that's life, I suppose.